Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Lewis Beck. Welcome to 343 TV, more specifically, Hybrid Home Studios. For those of you that are joining for the first time, welcome. For those of you that are back again, welcome back. Um, so today what I'm going to be talking about is uh, a really big kind of trend in contemporary music, which is, which is um, combining synths and guitars. Right, so there are a lot of like really famous, uh, you know, acts that have been doing this over the past few years. Uh, a few that jump to mind are like Bob Moses and Rufus De Soul, right? The kind of combining that like indie sound with um, an electronic dance sound. Um, you know, the prior examples would be um, there's also you know LCD sound system. Even Tame Impala is really big in doing that, right? And so what we're going to be talking about today is. Um, how to go about doing that, like what some of the best practices are, how I go about doing it, you know, in my own music, uh, which I produce under the name Sylvan Paul, uh, all of it is combining guitar and, um, and synths. So as usual, if you are here, please uh, drop a what's up into the chat. I'd always love to say what's good. What's up, Avon? What's up, Andrew Duke? Um, what's up, Enigmatic Onion? That's you have my new favorite name, so I'm really happy that you're uh, here. Okay, um, so for those of you that like don't know what 343 TV is, and this is your first time joining us or aren't familiar with 343 Labs, um, we are a music production school based in New York City and in Berlin. We offer classes online and in person, and um, if you want to go check out more of what we you know offer and teach, you can go check out. Our website, 343labs.com. Now, um, what up, TW Industries? Welcome back, man. Always good to have you. I'm doing well. It's absolutely freezing here in New York right now. So uh, let's try to forget about that and make some music. All right. Um, yeah, we're just going to jump into it. What's up, Daniel? Welcome, man. All right. So uh, as some of you may notice lately, I've been favoring jumping back into ableton for these streams just because i find it to be just like a little bit more fluid for just like making shit up on the spot um and so speaking of which what i'm actually going to be doing first is i'm going to come up with a chord progression that uh i'm going to write in the daw just on the piano um doo -doo -doo. Grand piano. Oh, respect. Yeah, the radiators are super nice, guy. Mine's been pretty loud though, so it's not so nice. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna write a, uh, like I said, a little chord progression. And uh, this is a good place to start from if you're actually trying to write like, you know, more indie style music because. You know, songwriting is a little bit more necessary as opposed to just like making shit up on the fly, uh, which I'm still going to do. But, you know, song structure and things like that. So I'm just getting my microphone situated. All right. So let's see what do I want to do. Oh, let me change my output so you all can hear me. All right, there we go. And just drop in a little bit of a thumbs up if, if you can hear me. I want to make sure. Should be able to, but since I just changed it, I want to make sure. So let's see. So the way that I write chord progressions when I'm uh, doing it is I'll usually just hear something in my head. And then I'll take the top notes that I'm hearing from the chords, the way they're voiced in my brain. And I'll just draw them out. And then, um, you know make them real quick okay vocals are good but quieter in the DAW how's that 
Oh, there we go. That should be a lot better, actually. I guess the mic preamp wasn't turned all the way up. My B. Okay, so. There we go. So that's just like a very, you know, Rufus-y kind of vaguely ambiguous chord progression that we could start to mess with. What I'm going to also do is make an alter alternate version of voicing. Scott, welcome, man. All right, yeah. So what I'm doing is, is I'm just gonna call this, you know, let's say this progression one, progression two. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna drag them both. Oh, excuse me. Into arrangement view. Wow. Okay, that's a crazy situation. I don't know why it's so large. Go up there. And I'm going to combine them into a single chord progression. Oops. So again, it's just like slightly alternate voicing. And while I'm listening to that, I'm going to load up an external instrument and send this over to a synth. And so for the for final voicing, I'll have it go. And kind of like brood down. So for those of you that like aren't highly familiar with music theory or are starting to get into it, you know, or even if you are and are just like curious about how to apply it in a, in a useful way, um, alternate voicings, are like you might look at this if you don't understand music theory and go, whoa, this is complicated. He's making all these crazy chords. These are actually just open open voicings so it's all if you notice it's the same notes i'm just voicing it larger so that it actually has a bigger sound at certain points so a great way to like fool your listener into thinking your music is more complex than it is is to use like different types of voicings um so i'm going to take this drag it down here this midi and now i'm going to do is, is i'm going to bring it in on uh let's see yeah nine and ten So first I'm just going to make a nice synth pad for this to function on, for this to live in. And so I'm going to reach over to my profit. That's really funny that you say that, uh, David, because my friend just... Maybe that's why I did this. My friend just sent me an edit. My friend Lubelski, who's a super sick producer that you should check. 
Uh, I'm going to type his name in there actually right now. He just made a really cool, cool edit of um, of that exact song. So maybe that's like burrowed into my subconscious. Uh, anyway, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm sending this over to my prophet. No, so that's a great question, Enigmatic Onion. So voicing is not an alternate progression in the same key. What voicing is, is it's a different way of expressing the same chord. So if I take this note and move it up, what I have is an F sharp minor. If I take this note and move it down, I still have an F sharp minor. It's just a different way of expressing it. So that this note is leading, and so it's instead of, right? So that's the difference. But it's still the same chord. It just sounds a little different to the ear. So that's a good question. So let's go right here. And I have it running through some guitar pedals, so I'm going to spice it up a little. Thank you, Tyra. So that's going to be my main progression that I'm going to mess with, right? So I'm going to put that out. I'm going to extend that for quite a bit. And so what I did there was, is if you want to know how to do that similar, you know, sound in the DAW, right? Very, very simple pad. That's just two saw waves um, that are you know, one of them's detuned, and then I just ran it through a really sweet kind of effect pedal called the, the uh, Poly Moon by Maris. So I'll type that into the chat as well. Uh, that's the name of the pedal that it's going through, and I'm also using the Avalanche Run by um, Earthquaker Devices. Uh, all right. Um, here we go. So I'm going to now start monitoring this as audio. Nice. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my guitar and we're going to start getting that. in for a treat today um okay good question by tw so what pedal features should we look for integrating for integrating into a hybrid setup so it really depends on what you want so like the thing that i have found is that guitar pedals that are specific that like work in modulation 
right? So guitar pedal. I don't know why I'm wearing these. I don't need them yet. Um, so I mean, really great effects to use. I think it's cool to have like a good reverb pedal and a good delay pedal. Like that's it. Um, and then anything else that you want, like phasers are cool, flangers are cool, things like that. But something that you can run a, an analog synth through and just make it and just sex it up a bit, you know? Because like there's this there's this perception. It's like oh, I'm using analog, therefore it sounds good. Like that's not true at all. Like it can still sound super boring if you don't understand how to apply like and some nice processing to it, right? So you guys are in for a treat today because I have actually mic'd up my amp for you. And this is how I actually record guitar. And so I, uh, my guitar amp, if I do toot my own horn for a second, is a vintage 1967 Fender Vibrolux reverb amp. It sounds fucking sweet. So um, what I'm going to do is is I am going to monitor the amp right through the DAW, so you'll hear me be able to do it in real time, and I am going to see if I can kind of combine something nice with these chords. I'm going to talk about how what I'm thinking about for how I'm approaching it, you know, um, and etc. Okay, it's a great question, Scott Vincent. No, so they are actual literal physical objects. They are guitar pedals. Right. So it's like what I would plug this guy into. Um, and so I actually take my synths and I run them through guitar pedals. So this is a really common practice. Um, yeah. But good question, Scott. Huh. OK, so let's think about. All right. Let me just make sure this guy's in tune real fast. I don't want to make ugly music for you guys, especially because it's a super nice progression and honestly while I'm doing that I'll just play it it from here but it's what's called a small diaphragm condenser microphone and it's custom built from a company called Hendy Amps in um, in Austin Texas really cool guy Chris Henderson you should check his stuff out um, okay so this is my profit and this is going to be my guitar Yeah, no, it's very true, uh, Daniel. So if you want to have the MIDI integ integration, it can be really cool. I personally will manipulate the guitar pedals in real time because I think it adds more of like a human element uh, to it. But that's just me. You know, like there's no there's no right way to do it. But yeah, most of mine do have MIDI integration if so desired. Um, but I don't desire, so <laughs> that's why. <coughs> All right, anyway, I'm going to turn on my guitar. My... Um, So let's see if we can get this thing monitoring through here so you can hear exactly what I'm hearing. So I'm bringing this in on input five. I'm bringing it in through a Heritage Audio preamp for any of you that care. So tell me if you can hear this.
That's sounding nice. We can give it a little more juice, though. Great, so let me figure out what chords I'm playing because I already forgot. So F minor, C sharp minor, or ooh, F sharp minor, C sharp minor, and D sharp, nope, and then B major. F sharp minor, C sharp minor, B major. Okay, let me see that again. So tell me if you guys are hearing that uh, in there. So you should be able to. Anyway, so I'm going to press play now, and I'm going to go over there and start stomping on some pedals and get the tone to be something a little bit that matches this really nice sound that I just made on my Prophet. All right? So, hey, what's up, Luis? All right. So, as you can hear, there's a little bit of feedback on the guitar channel, so we'll just stop monitoring that for a second. Um, so, what I'm going to do is to make my life a little bit easier is I'm going to throw on a clap. Just for a second. Um, so that I am able to. Oh, why don't you do that? Drag on a drum rack. Let me actually get something on there. And all I'm going to do is just create like a simple little beat 
so that I am able to play in time because this, you know, this pad is floating through space and it's super, uh, it's like, you know, there's, <laughs> it's pretty hard to keep time with it. Uh, all right. Ah, they're all so loud. There's no claps on here. Okay, fine. Let's go to 808. And a little. Just give myself a little bit of something to latch on to rhythmically. This isn't my final at all right so a lot of what i do when i'm making music is, is like put things in there to help me that actually have nothing to do with the final product that i'm going to be creating let's do loop it out for the space of the the bar or for the space of the loop so now i'll get this <laughs> back on. exact same way that uh, I'm voicing the chords on the piano right <clears throat> I'm doing the same thing with my guitar so instead of going like this which alone sounds very nice those deep notes are creating a bit of like this constant like are not perfectly matching in that space and so I'm going to play it all from the A string. By using a different voicing. I'm going to find a different pick. Now what I should also confess is that that reverb that you're hearing on my guitar is built into the amp. It's uh, what's called a spring reverb. It sounds super smooth and natural. So what I'm first going to do is I'm, I like this little arpeggiated pattern that I was doing. So I'm going to practice that for a sec.
I'll mess around with it while I'm doing it, but I'm just going to record that in. Record those passes now. And of course, since this is, you know, the digital realm and contemporary <coughs> reality, um, you know, I'm not going to probably use the whole thing necessarily, but I'm going to give myself a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, I'm going to give myself enough rope to hang myself, so to speak. Ooh, that is super loud. What I'm also going to do is that one of my least favorite things about Ableton, unfortunately, is that it doesn't really do counting in very well. So I'm just going to start from here. Halfway through the progression. I think I got right at the end a really nice take that I can loop back around and reuse. So let's see that. So what I can do is I can also create like a Frankenstein take, right? Where I'm going to go through there and pick the best stuff that I played because I'm not really warmed up. And that's going to be my excuse now that I'm terrible at the guitar. Um, so let's find stuff. do a cool technique actually instead of choosing between these two I'm actually gonna duplicate the channel and what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna delete one of them and I'm gonna 
have them together because they're played differently, right? I definitely did not play that perfect. And they're different enough now where what I can do is something called a double. And this is a really cool technique. Now, if I had played this more perfectly, um, then I could have maybe looped it for the whole time. And maybe I'll go out and do that in a second. But what you can do is this is a really cool technique. So it's called doubling, right? And so what it is is where you're going to take one take and pan it all the way to the left and one take and pan it all the way to the right. And what you're left with is this. A absolutely monster guitar tone. And I'm not so bad that it doesn't sound good, you know? Little differences sound great though. So if I loop this back around now. So I don't like that end part, even though it sounds nice, it just, it didn't like, it's not good for looping, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this out here and find another take that works better. That's definitely not it, what did I play the wrong chord? That's cool, because it's different. So that'll add a nice little bit of texture to what I'll do is I'll just overlap them and then go like this. Oops. Now that should loop really nice. So let's check this out now. What this sounds like in the context of the synths now. So now I'm going to do is I'm real quick going to cut out a little bit of low end from both of them. There's some gook. Right down there. And even though it sounds like it's thinning it out, since they're going to combine together, it sounds super nice. And the pad also is living in that space. And now it leaves space for the bass to come in, which I'm going to put in a sec. just want to real quick get into like you know dance mode I'll just throw on a kick drum <coughs> into this spot um, let's use a 606 I don't know why I just feel like using a 606 
gonna take a chorus, put on the clap. Let me go reach in and find another one. Maybe I'm going to put a flanger on here now. I've been obsessed with flangers lately. did you open up Pandora's box of compression? Now I have to explain to you why everything you just asked is wrong. Um, compressors don't make things louder, my friend. They also don't make things better. Um, they can make things better and they can make things seem louder. But literally what a compressor does is it makes something quieter. That's what its only function is. It reduces peaks. All right, so compressors are useful for evening out performances that are uneven. So for instance, if I wanted to really smooth out these guitars, it could be a decent idea to put on, you know, uh, some compression. So like I could put on something to make it sound really vintage and juicy. Put on this cat, the LA-2A. Definitely don't put a compressor on your master bus. If you don't know what you're doing with a compressor, you're just going to make your track sound way thin and worse and mushy. And So my recommendation for you is take a mixing class with Abe Duque at 343 Labs and have him teach you about what compressors do. Um, and if you don't know what a compressor does, don't use it because it literally will make your music sound worse. I'm not, I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm saying that because just like from years and years of me doing it wrong and making it sound worse, until you know how to do it right, you really shouldn't do it. Oh man, I already finished the track from last week that I started. Thank you, Andrew Duke. I appreciate that, man. So what I'm doing with this compression, Avon, right, is there's this little teeny bit of peak reduction. So I realize it makes it sing. Yeah, but it's not a compressor anymore. A compressor and expander are different, Daniel. So I, I like that you're trying to be all cheeky and shit, but you wrong, son. So as you can hear, right, turning it on does not make it louder at all because I've now gain staged it properly. What I'm doing here when this little knob is going down is you can see those loud moments are being caught and smoothed out. That's what a compressor is literally, that's literally what it is designed to do. It is to catch out and smooth compression. I'm mean, smooth peaks, I'm saying smooth compression. You got me all frizzled. No, but I, I like that that Daniel that you're saying that that's um that's that's a very good point. It's good to understand that it does that. So now what I've done is I've added a little bit of vibe because this oh my god, I absolutely love this man. It's like one of their earliest plugins, but it's just so good. It it's just like I have a bunch of analog gear and this thing honestly sounds pretty damn close to analog it's so warm and clean
I actually hate that kick because it's so... So I'm on delay. I'm using something called a slapback delay. Which is like a really fast delay, so it barely sounds like it's delaying, but it's like super quick. And then what I'm gonna do is one of my favorite things, which is I'm gonna actually saturate the this, this slapback. So this is Slate Digital. I use these all the time for saturation. They're literally just preamps models, but I like them more than most hard, like more most specifically designed. Like saturators are just for saturating things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive the shit out of the input. There we go. So I'm starting to get some nice breakup from this, making it way juicy. So as you can pretty much hear, what it's doing is just thicking it up, right? Which is always nice. So that's on the delay. So now my clap's gonna sound juicier. Oh, there's some crazy high frequency disgustingness happening. High mid disgustingness. So I love using this virtual mix rack from Slate. Should probably be a sales rep for them. I use this shit on every track. There we go. So I'm just taking out some of that high mid crap that was sounding super harsh. And then I'm gonna take this thing called Revival and literally thicken it up. So I'm still monitoring this profit, right? So what I might do now is, is I might like get some kind of bass kick situation going. Cause I don't like this one at all. It's pretty, it's pretty harsh. I mean, it's, it's like thick, but that's it. Maybe I can do something cool with the virtual mix rack. Uh, yeah, that revival joint, what it does is uh, it, it adds a little bit of shimmer, which is like high frequency shelf, or thickness, which is a low frequency shelf. Um, it sounds pretty good on a master bus, if like, you know, on your mix bus, if you find that your track just feels a little bit like not as weighty as it can, you turn this thickness up a little bit and you should be chilling. Um, shimmer sounds nice on the top of vocals and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is very similar thing. Right there. Oh, so nasty, so harsh. There we go. Same thing there. I also don't like that it's so long, so I'm gonna turn down the release.
So I've just been tightening up the kick a little. I, don't, I still don't love that, but... Thank you, La Nouvelle. What we could do is this, though. It sounds gross. One of the reasons that I'm going to make it such a shorter kick. Yeah, dude, these that tall free chorus is hilarious. I love it so much. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know what Andrew's talking about, this is literally a free plugin. It's just a chorus plugin. It's <laughs> sounds so great. I love it. Um yeah, so anyway, so let me I'm going to add some more guitar in. Actually, I just got an idea for some guitar line. Um. This time I'm going to turn all the reverb off. <laughs> Turning on my phaser pedal so I get that funky energy going. So I like really like that kind of thing, little like Niles Rogery kind of little disco y, right? So let's call this like funky rhythm guitar. I don't think I can spell. Did I spell rhythm right? I don't know, that's one of the craziest words ever. Um let's turn on profit monitoring for both of these bad boys. <laughs> Same thing, where I'm gonna record it, give myself some time.
one was fucking nice. Okay, so I'm probably going to keep all of them, to be honest. Um, La Nouvelle, drop in a voice note. Let me hear that shit. Um, all right. So let's see. I think from here is guys. Ah, oh, dude, nothing beats recording with a real amp. It's just so nice. Thank you, man. Thank you, Daniel. So pan a little bit to the right. Maybe we could have some fun here and like do something weird where I would. Oh yeah, apparently that a lot. I know a lot of people that like that pigment stuff. I'm like an analog snob, but respect. That stuff's cool. <laughs> So one cool thing to do would be to, to just literally to play the exact same line an octave up. Um, hold on a sec. Let me see. I'll type in my, oh man, what is, hold on. I actually don't know what my 343 email is on the top of my head. Do I have a dot in it? Yes, okay. Um, here, you can send me an email at this address. All right. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to play this uh, same line that I just played an octave up. Where did I just place my pick? That's interesting. Man, I always misplace my pick. It's kind of gnarly. Like, it's constant, in fact never ending one by the way I was liking the way that one was sounding I don't know where it went okay I'll just use this one oh there it is Jesus although to be honest using a different pick will probably sound nicer on the double let's see what it sounds like just the idea of it it might sound bad I like that. It was an idea.
I do like the idea though. Kind of almost vibrato sound on my guitar. pretty nice. I actually might use that to uh, play the chords over the song. Let's see what that sounds like. This thing where I'm gonna play the uh, the chords on the guitar out wide, and this time I'm gonna actually play it. And I purposely added this kind of room sound to it by creating like a lot of s really quick re uh, delay on the pedal that I have pl it plugged into. Um, so let's see, guitar chords. Let's try that.
again is a little bit of a little bit more of a delay. A little it'll just kind of make it blend in with everything a bit more. So I'm gonna record that again. Rolling up my sleeves. Yeah, I'm going to do that right now, Scott. So I'm going to, I'm just kind of meditating on that though, secretly the whole time and thinking about what I want to add in as a bass line. Um, so that's about to happen. Your wish is my command. like so many different levels i love that so for thank you max so on the one hand right so this is a double right and so um the cool thing about this is that i've played it twice and you know i'm like good enough at guitar where i'm not gonna screw it up i'm gonna keep you know rhythm and everything and so i already have vibrato in the actual tone right with the phaser And I created this like weird kind of like feedback, you know, like room feedback sound with one of my pedals. And so now when I combine them, I almost get like an organic chorus that I just created. 
Oh, thank you, Max. That is the ultimate, the ultimate. I love Dark Side. So once we get the pads in now. So I'm just going to like show you guys how I honestly make music, right? A lot of the time. So what I would do, I'm going to be totally like forthright at this point would be, um, I would eventually drag this into logic to, to mix it properly and stuff. Not cause I have anything against mixing in Ableton per se, but lately this, this, these acoustica plugins that I use make Ableton explode. So I don't, I don't really know why that is. And I absolutely love mixing with them. Um, so yeah, if you guys are digging this sound, not to like do shameless self-promotion, my Sylvan Paul material is pretty much all, I don't want to say all in this style, but it gestures towards this feeling definitely a lot. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually track this, this, this pad finally, right? Get involved. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of imagine a song in my head, right? And so... I'm going to imagine the structure of a song and I'm going to perform this for quite a bit. Um, as you can see, I'm like kind of preparing for battle here. Um, and, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the kick and the clap. And I'm also going to put in a hi-hat just because like, it's going to make it a little vibier for just like a moment. Oh, and it has a delay on it. It sounds so good. Now I'm going to do something weird that most, like, that a lot of, you know, dance music producers would be upset about, maybe. I'm going to make my velocity inconsistent. Now I'm gonna do right is I'm going to like I said track this pad. Wow. Okay, I'm not gonna track the pad for seven minutes. That's I think you guys would murder me. Um, but I will do is track it for two revolutions, which is almost that's five minutes. Jeez, man. Why am I always making these crazy long songs? Uh, all right. I'm pretty sure this is not insane way to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop over to my synthesizer. And again, Scott, the next thing to come is a bass line after I do this synth work. So worry you not. It's coming, man. I'm just trying to feel it, trying to figure out what exactly I want it to be. So I'm kind of like going to create a mini arrangement right here, right? So what I'm going to do is, is first, I'm going to go like this. I want it to start like that because it's super nice, super chill, right? Maybe what I would even do would be this. fade in
This is like the intro right here. And then... Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start trying to perform it on the Prophet. Uh, I'll call this Prophet Pair. I'm going to start it off. We're going to go mobile right now. I'm going to start it off a lot more gentle and slowly open it up. I actually want to start in that dreamscape, right? Not intense. And then once the guitar starts coming in, I'm going to actually start turning it up a little bit. And let's fake them out. start opening this up more and more and more this cut off now I'm gonna do one big sweep for the first drop Let's give it one where we open it up more. What I'm doing right now is I'm kind of just like imagining moments in the song. I'm not actually trying to make this flow in like a sensible way. I'm trying to create as many different instances of this pad in different states as I can so that when I actually start producing it out, um, I have these different moments to access, right? So the next one that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down, create a smaller moment. And I'm going to fold the pad. And so this is basically just me creating like fodder for me to sample myself. A big part of um, you know producing with outboard gear is if you haven't written the entire song before you've gotten it into the computer, you know, it's usually a good idea to kind of like record too much so that you have some stuff to pilfer, you know. So I'm gonna begin to do a big sweep now here. I'm gonna start opening it up at this moment. So maybe a moment in the song where we're expanding. And then there's a big moment of elation or something. So 
now I'm gonna give it pretty much all the way open, you know? Maybe some for some final moments, some big moment in the song where we want it to be really buzzy and crispy and like, you know, textured. It's my favorite thing about the Prophet. When you open it all the way up, it sounds so damn textured and lovely. Now let's close it back down. Ah. So the MIDI ran out. <laughs> so I'm still going to do probably one more little bit that I'm going to add in. Try this right here. And now what I'm going to do is for this final one, I'm going to do one really quiet one where the whole entire progression is quiet just in case I need that at some point for the song guy in there which is where we all started right this is how it all started I do would be hold off the chords until the beat comes in, like the kick comes in that is, make it sound bigger. Something we could even, I would even play with compositionally would be to have the pad go away and have the chords become more prominent on the guitar. concepts. fun little trick that I do sometimes with like things that I've tracked in stereo but stereo is I take this plugin from Waves called the TG12345 which is modeled off, uh, off of uh, like Abbey Road consoles and stuff not that that really matters uh, and what I do is is it, I put into mid side mode and uh, it has this really gnarly compressor circuit that's built into it it's like <laughs> way too aggressive it's not useful for actual compression usually but um what I'll do is I'll turn the compression on only on the outside because it just zaps it to life. So listen to what happens when I do this. Ooh. 
now or suddenly in stereo. Hello, outside. And now I'll turn the spread on a little to make it wider. So check that out. This is middle, wide. Great trick for any of you that are like recording in stereo. Now the track is fucking huge. Maybe it's almost too big. I need to bring it in. Yeah, there we go. So it's living in that middle, in that kind of middle space. That middle space is where every everything that's beautiful happens. Is that space in between the middle and the wide? Is like where all. If you can fill that space successfully, you're pretty much gonna have like a really nice sound. All right, let's add a bass line. I'm going to go to my handy dandy Moog. So I'm going to load up a new external instrument. And send it over to Mr. Voyager. I actually think though that I'm gonna track it not through. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll just track it through there. Save some time. Um.
for now, I'm just going to go for that like sustained bass line, that classic sustained bass line. A little boring, but I'm going to try it just for now. bend there at the end Like that. I'm gonna record like a couple takes of that, maybe like a minute or two of that, just to have them. And then that'll be that essentially. That was baseline one, because I'm probably gonna write, try to write another one. That's the grossest color I've ever seen. Let's do that. Let's see. Okay, hit record. And it's not recording, sick. Such a cool guy.
So one good idea on a, like Moog, if you're using any Moog products, because they're just awesome, but also huge, is uh, to cut out everything below 20 hertz. So I usually just do that as a rule of thumb with uh, any baseline from particularly Moog. Uh, and it surprisingly helps. Actually, unsurprisingly, it just like really cleans things up. <laughs> mix come forward because it's not being dragged down by the fatness of senior Bob Mo. Maybe you just want like a quick approximation right of what this might sound like in the final product. Throw the compressor on there. So I think uh, I'm going to call it quits right about there for today. That's a solid amount of work that we've got done. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for tuning in, everybody. This was a super fun session for me, at least. I hope it was insightful and helpful for you in terms of guiding, you know, how you combine synths and guitars to make a, like, cool kind of contemporary indie sound. Um and, you know, for those of you that tuned in for the first time, I definitely saw some names I hadn't seen before. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you haven't seen any episodes of 343 TV before, this is the online branch, right? It's totally free of uh, the music education school, music, music production school um, called 343 Labs. And we're based in New York City and we're also based in uh, Berlin. And uh, obviously things are a little bit crazy right now. So, you know, taking classes in person isn't necessarily a thing, but we're offering tons of online courses. Um, and, you know, I would love to see some of you guys in class at some point. Uh, if you dug the content, please hit subscribe. You know, we'd love to, uh, we're just always trying to build our community and uh, reach out to new people. And, you know, there's nothing more than we love than hearing music from people who, uh, you know, are part of this little world that we've been creating for the past few years. Um, and so, yeah, it was an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you, Scott, who said thanks for tuning in and thank you to everyone else. That's, uh, you know, coming in every week, shout out to TWD industries and Andrew Duke and, uh, Luis, I see you guys in here a lot. And so, you know, it's much appreciated. So I'm not just, uh, composing into the void. All right. Well, uh, that's all for me today. Stay safe, stay warm, stay sane, and, uh, I'll see you next week. Peace.